Okay, these are the kind of stories that I hate to do. It's a little missing 11 year old girl out of Texas and there's so much drama. I've been following this story. Let's start with the case of Audrey Cunningham. Audrey Cunningham, she spells it with two eyes and she's 11 and she's missing. So today, as I film this, it's Friday, February 16th. It's 6.33 p.m. But it seems to have started with Casey Matthews. Casey Matthews is Audrey's mother. She posted to Facebook on Thursday, February 15th, 2024 at 8.20 p.m. If anyone sees this little girl anywhere, please call the cops, me, or her grandma. Please, my baby is missing, y'all. Please help us find her, please. Her name is Audrey and she is only 11. Please help us find her. So someone asked, where did she go missing from? And Casey said, I'm being told Lake Livingston Estates 2 and 3. She was dropped off at her bus stop this morning and she hasn't made it home. So at least that's what Casey was led to believe at first. Her little girl was dropped off at her bus stop allegedly Thursday morning, Livingston, Texas. But right after that post was made on Thursday, February 15th, 2024, at 8.39 p.m., only 19 minutes later, a man named Joshua Cunningham, so that's Audrey's dad, Joshua Cunningham wrote, My daughter, Audrey Cunningham, is missing, all caps. She did not make it to the bus stop this morning. Contact me and the police immediately with any information. Now, I've been trying to piece together what I can with this case. It's all over the place. There have been press conferences. There's unverified news out there that Audrey's backpack and her shoe may have been found in this area of concentration. Well, the cops aren't giving us much. But it's the dad's roommate, a man named Stephen McDougall, who is on everyone's mind. Now, cops do say there's a person of interest out there or persons of interest, but they did not name any names. The press release from the Polk County Sheriff's Office out of Texas says the Polk County Sheriff's Office has issued an Amber Alert. A lot of people got this Amber Alert down there for 11-year-old Polk County resident Audrey Cunningham. So Audrey was last seen near her residence residence at approximately 7 a.m. on February 15th, 2024. So that's yesterday, 7 a.m. in the 100 block of Lakeside Drive in Polk County, Texas. Audrey should have caught the bus at her neighborhood bus stop. However, school officials reported to the sheriff's office that the school bus did not pick Audrey up, nor did she report to school. At this time, Audrey's whereabouts are unknown. The Polk County Sheriff's Office is currently on scene as being assisted by all these different entities. They explain that Audrey Cunningham is a white female with blonde hair and blue eyes. She weighs only 75 pounds and is approximately four feet, one inches tall. Audrey was last seen wearing black pants, a black hoodie with white lettering and black high top tennis shoes. So these are the ones reportedly from, uh, I just watched Chronicles with Olivia. She's down there, boots on the ground. According to her, Audrey's backpack and a shoe has been found. Black high top tennis shoes. She was also carrying a bright red Hello Kitty style backpack. So that's what the sheriff's office says. She was carrying a bright red Hello Kitty style backpack. I've read other reports of her carrying some kind of camouflage backpack, so I'm not sure. The news is all over the place. Anyone has information, please contact the Polk County Sheriff's Office. You can submit an anonymous tip to at this p3tips.com. So check out their Facebook page, Beautiful Little Girl. Ugh, just should be allowed to be a little girl. Now, some people aren't afraid to call out this Don Stephen McDougall by name. And there was a woman who even went live on Facebook today and followed him as he was followed by the police. This McDougall character, he looks pretty scary. He has a record. And of course, there's no confirmation that he has anything to do with this. But we're going to read some text messages. We're going to get into this story. According to the Trinity County Sheriff, Woody Wallace, he posted Don Stephen McDougall's picture. He talks about Audrey being missing almost 17 hours at the time of his posting. She was allegedly dropped off at the bus stop for school Thursday morning at 7 a.m. According to these messages, we're going to read from Stephen McDougall 
to Audrey's mom. Stephen McDougal, as I understand it, is a roommate to the father of Audrey. Audrey's dad is named Joshua Cunningham. This guy, Don Stephen McDougal, according to these Facebook posts, is a guy who watched Audrey allegedly when the dad was at work. That's what this Facebook group is saying. But Sheriff Woody Wallace says, according to online comments, Audrey was allegedly dropped off by her father's roommate, Don Stephen McDougal. McDougal has a large rap sheet for unrelated charges. It is a developing story. And ugh, it just feels like the writing's on the wall, especially what another woman claims about McDougal. If you join the Find Audrey Cunningham discussion group, there's more than 3,000 members right now, you will see messages between McDougal the dad's roommate, Stephen, and Audrey's mom, Cassie, the day before Audrey went missing. And it's just icky and troublesome. It shows a screenshot with Stephen McDougal. It says active now. It looks like a maybe a Facebook exchange. There's a missed video call. So it starts at some point and then it goes into the last dreaded text message or Facebook messenger exchange the morning that Audrey supposedly went missing, which could be more likely she might have gone missing actually that Wednesday. I believe this exchange is from Wednesday, February 14th. There's a missed video call and Steven's saying, ain't nothing wrong with me. I wasn't meaning it disrespectful, but it is something that you would want and can't talk about it on here. I don't know what they're talking about and she says it's not something you can call me about he says i did call she says i just think the way you came about that was extremely inappropriate and was disrespectful to not only justin but me as well it's hard to know what they mean there's an audio call there's a video chat she says what's up i'm super effing livid right now honestly because i don't understand steven says why are you livid I've never disrespected you. Your baby has been asking me about you. So I guess Stephen there is talking about Audrey asking him about Cassie. Now, as I understand it, and I don't know if this is all correct, but according to the post in the Facebook group, they're saying Cassie did not have custody of Audrey. And so I think grandma may have had custody, but Audrey was staying with her dad, presumably, and that's how this guy, McDougal, got around Audrey. So he's saying, your baby has been asking me about you. And Cassie says, this all just come across weird and wrong. And Valentine's Day is not my favorite day. I lost my very first best friend on this day. And that just didn't sound right and looked bad. And I don't know. And what do you mean asking about me? What has she been asking? So they're talking about Audrey now, I pr presume. Okay, so Steven says, sweetie, I am as straightforward as it comes. If I was just talking to you to try to F you, I would have done tried. Touche, I give you that, she says. Steven says, she asked me if I ever talked to you and if you were as bad as they say you are. So I don't know if Audrey's mom has some kind of issues, maybe substance problems. I don't know the details. I haven't seen confirmation, of course. You only hear the rumors and scuttlebutt. Cassie said, just came off wrong, upset me. Wow, as bad as they say. What did you say? McDougal said, oh yeah, they have made it look like you're just horrible. I told her that you're doing good and are fun to hang with. And Cassie says, when did she ask this? McDougal said, she asked me yesterday going to school. Okay, and Cassie says, I'm surprised she thought about me. She's scared to see me because of their reaction. I mean, didn't you say they kept her inside for a month after I seen her that day at Justin's mom's? So McDougal says, she does all the time. Yes, exactly. Yes, she is still not allowed outside by herself in the evening, which makes sense. I mean, she's only 11. They told her that you are in the woods. She is confused about the situation, but I told her that you are not hiding in the woods, but we talk. Okay, so Cassie says, what is wrong with him? Is he on drugs or that effing stressed that his mental has him thinking I'm going to steal her in the night? 
or that I live in the effing woods behind his mom's house? That's some serious crazy-ish. It's like they are scaring her and brainwashing her with literal insane thoughts only a child would believe so she doesn't want to know me like they make it out to be. I just feel so bad. This girl, I feel like crying right now. It's just, ugh. I just, you know, you just feel like that sunken feeling like, I just hate that a little girl had to be around this mess at all. Okay, so Cassie continues, makes me wonder if Lucky has the beginning stages of his mom's mental problems and no ish talking, just concerned for him in general as a person. Or tell me, is that whole effing family just all throwed off in general, acting like an effing cult or some ish? Might not want to drink the Kool-Aid, man. If you know what I mean, McDougal wrote back, not him. Cassie wrote, not like I'm going to react upon this because I surely won't. I want what's best for my kid and being everything they fuel her head with wouldn't be anything in my favor. So it sounds like Cassie's saying, look, you know, there are other people are poisoning Audrey's mind against her own mother. McDougal said, like I said, I told him I talked to you. So who's he mean? You know, it's very confusing. McDougal is writing, like I said, I told him I talked to you. And then Cassie says, but it makes me sick to my stomach that they think that's okay. She has a innocent, fragile child mind and them warping it with chaos is not right, man. McDougal says, don't, but I might take you out to the dock to fish and accidentally pull up with her to fish. And so McDougal is saying like he's, you know, being a good guy, he's claiming, oh, maybe I'll go out with you, Cassie, to go fishing. And oops, here's Audrey too. So getting mom and daughter together on the low, on the sly. I'm not sure what the custody looks like. I'm not sure if Cassie is supposed to see Audrey or what. Cassie says the one by their house. McDougal says really anywhere. Cassie says, that's asking for trouble and setting me up for failure. And McDougal is saying, not at all. So I don't know why that would be setting Cassie up for failure if she's supposed to have some kind of supervised visits or no visits at all. So she's not wanting, I guess, McDougal to sneak Audrey somewhere to the dock and take her to see her mother because Cassie knows, I guess that's not the right way to go about it based on whatever the court says. I don't know where court orders are in place. Cassie says, I do not in any way need to be set up to lose my child even more. Lucky would lose it if he knew. And is this what she asked you to do? Cassie is trying to say, look, is Audrey wanting to see me so much that she's asking you McDougal to, you know, sneak up somewhere to the dock to fish together and Lo and behold, your mom's here. This next line is what is getting to people. McDougal said, I'm your daughter's favorite person and she will not tell. Oh, it's just, oh, it's creepy and sad and oh, like, don't worry. I'm your daughter's favorite person and she won't tell, you know, if we sneak this little arrangement together. Cassie said, or what y'all maybe talked about for her to see me? You know, Cassie's trying to figure out, has this plot been in place or plan or what? McDougal says, she wants to meet you. I told you, I am on your team. I will do what I can. So he's playing the good guy role here. Cassie says, I want to meet her too. But if this comes back on me bad in any way, I could lose her forever. And I would kill you then myself, man. No threat, but a promise. Ooh. So McDougal is saying it would not, like it's not gonna come back on you in any way. He says, as long as no one says anything about it being set up, no one would even know. And she won't say anything to them. Cassie says, there is a park down the road from my house. Would that be okay? And you and Justin would have to sit nearby and BS or pretend to do. You can listen if you need to, but for my protection as well, I couldn't be alone. So I guess she's not supposed to be alone with her daughter. Then McDougal wrote, I mean, Justin can walk around the park and we can talk to you. Cassie wrote, this whole thing scares me and that's fine. And McDougal wrote, like for real, for real. Cassie wrote, 
why doesn't she? And I don't know what she means by why doesn't she? McDougal wrote, it's okay, we don't have to. And then Cassie wrote, like, you know, her emotions are being played with. No, I want to. Just please understand that I'm as scared as she is. She's not the only one made to feel terrified about things like this. And it's sad because she is my daughter and I her mother. We should be happy and excited to get to see each other or at least not so scared to do so. Don't you see anything wrong with that man? Like, please understand. But yes, I want to see her. Yes, I want to talk to her and answer any questions she has truthfully, no matter how much it may hurt me. Cassie said she deserves to know the truth on my end and also how much I do love her because at this point she's got to be questioning if I do or not. So McDougal wrote, oh, I see the wrong with it and I am trying to fix what I see wrong. You are not a bad person and she deserves the chance to know that. Then Cassie wrote, when would you want to do this? McDougal wrote, you want to do it tomorrow? So that would be the day she allegedly went missing. Thursday, February 15th would be the tomorrow they're talking about. Cassie wrote, Look, it's one thing to have you say it, but before we meet tomorrow at that park, I need to hear her say it herself, either in video or on the phone, that this is what she wants, is to meet me and to talk to me. She doesn't have to say nothing more or nothing less, please. Cassie continued, you don't know what I've been through trying to have anything to do with her or the harassment from his friends and such because of the lies they have been told. I need reassurance. McDougal said, okay, I will take her to school tomorrow. So Cassie says after school, correct? So this is the plan. I guess they'll meet after school on Thursday when she never showed up. And McDougal says, yes, like after school, correct? Yes. And then Cassie says, what time would I need to be at the park? And you can guarantee I will hear her say it, that she wants me to be there. And McDougal says, yes, I will take her to school and have you on the phone. Cassie says, I will not force anything on her. Seems there's been enough of that already. Okay, when do you take her to school? McDougal says, at seven. Cassie says, okay, I'll be awake by 6.30 or 6.40. Okay, so you can see Thursday, 12.28 a.m. This conversation is going into the night, into the hours, we're into the day where, where she allegedly went missing. Into the day, the hours prior to Audrey going missing. Cassie continued, I do love her and I pray this is no setup for more bad things to come to me when all I want is to know my child. Ooh, what prophetic eerie words. Cassie said, good night, hope to hear from her tomorrow. Okay, so now we have Thursday, 6.31 a.m. Cassie writes, morning. McDougal writes, good morning. Cassie writes, hope to hear from her this morning and please let her know that if she changed her mind, that is perfectly okay too. And I understand, don't want her feeling pressured. So this mom is saying, it's a lot of onus to put on a child, all these adult issues. But the mom is saying, look, I want to hear it out of Audrey's mouth that she wants to see me herself. She's saying, you know, I don't want Audrey feeling pressured or anything like that to see her mom. And again, whatever the court rules are, those should be followed. Whatever God wants in this situation should be followed, not all this manipulation and I don't know who's sober I don't know the situation just this poor little girl but Cassie wrote so I know it's not going to be a thing today but when she's ready please let me know y'all have a good day man so by 3 19 p.m Cassie knew for some reason because I don't see any messages any other messages besides that good morning from McDougal Okay, it's not going to be a thing today. I guess we're not meeting at the park after school. You know, it's already 319 when she's um, sending this message. Y'all have a good day, man. Now, Thursday at 3.52 p.m., McDougal writes, yes, ma'am. But Thursday by 6.46 p.m., now this is critical, McDougal's writing, hey, have you seen Audrey? Then he wrote, I dropped her off at the bus and she didn't get on and hasn't gotten home. What kind of sense does that make? He's claiming 
and I think people have security footage allegedly seeing him driving by. He, I guess, is claiming, I dropped her off at the bus, so maybe he just dropped her off and didn't wait there with her, but oh, here's wherever your bus stop is. And he knows by Thursday at 6.46 p.m. that Audrey didn't get on the bus and hasn't gotten home. I guess he's claiming under the assumption that he thought Audrey must have just got on the bus like normal, but she's not home by 6.46 p.m. So he's saying, I dropped her off at the bus and she didn't get on and hasn't gotten home. Cassie is saying, no, Stephen, basically, where the F is my kid? So she knows something is wrong by then. Something is not right. And then we have more text messages. There's a lot of messages to go around. There's a comment written by Stephen McDougall, which he says, I definitely didn't hurt that baby. Anyone that knows me knows I didn't. And my whereabouts was right there knocking on doors, trying to find video footage. Yes, of course. I got took to the station and questioned all night and was let go because I didn't do anything but what I do on a regular basis. So again, everyone's innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. It just doesn't bode well for his track record. And of course, anyone can have a track record, a bad record of stuff, of assaults and what have you. Of course, that doesn't mean they go forward to reoffend. But there is a woman who wrote this in the Facebook group, this woman alleges Stephen McDougall tried to basically bother R.A. me when I was 10 years old. My parents were friends of his sisters. One night he came into my cousin's room where her and I were sleeping, ripped my cousin off the bed and tried to basically copulate with her. I was 10 years old, she says. I remember running as fast as I could and hiding in the living room and watching him look around for me until he finally just went to bed. He is not a man who should have been around any children and I'm not the only victim. Ugh, it's horrible. It's just horrible. You can read more. Some people are thinking this was a setup for the mom. Some people are believing it's some kind of setup. You know, was the mom being set up to say, oh, you know, Audrey disappeared under Cassie's watch because we were sneaking her over there to see Cassie and maybe Cassie took her. I don't know what this case is going to turn out to be. All I know is just, I just feel so much sadness. I feel so much sadness for little Audrey. I don't know. I just wish she could have been in a place of love. I don't know what happened to her. I don't know who did what to her. It's just, I don't know, I just don't have a good feeling. I'll let you watch the press conference, but we can close with Jeremiah 23, 28. The prophet who has a dream may tell his dream, but he who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat for nourishment, says the Lord. Oh, this little girl just, um, ugh, it just makes you just not want to cover these stories anymore. I just wish they never happened. Lord, please protect little Audrey if she is already with you, which feels like the feeling. When you watch the presser, you know, there's been a couple of pressures. Cops aren't giving up much information. And with that information from uh, Chronicles of Olivia that allegedly Audrey's backpack and shoe were found, we don't know where, when, or how. The cops aren't, you know, giving out a lot of information as of this recording, but it's so sad in the presser when, you know, they're kind of like calling off the search, as it were. They had boats in the water. Or there's a huge lake. They're searching for Audrey. And then the cop says, well, okay, well, it's getting dark. That's why we're basically calling it a night. You know, it's going to be dark. We're not going to have boats out on the water in the dark and all that. It's like they almost already know. There's all these rumors about some confession having happened, but I don't know. I don't see anyone in custody. I don't know what's true and what's not. The reporter's asking, well, yeah, it's getting dark. It's dark out there for her, too. It's getting dark. The elements, she'll be out in the elements, you know, like basically he's like, why are we leaving? Why are you guys leaving? Law enforcement said we need to reconvene, see what information we have and basically start up fresh, I guess, in the morning. But it's like they already know and they're just it's like they're just searching for remains or something. I don't know the way it's that's the way I took the presser. You can watch it all. It's just very sad. We can keep praying for Audrey tonight. Too bad she couldn't have been surrounded 
by love, and I'm sure she was surrounded by plenty of people who loved her. I just hate whatever circumstance caused her to disappear and be this victim of whatever happened to her. I just hate that it had to happen. I always like to imagine children in happy families playing, being a little 11 year old girl and not having to fear or feel the feelings of all these adult problems and evil issues. I'll leave it at that. I'm just trying to choose my words carefully because I don't know who did what to Audrey and I just want more official information. So thanks for watching so much all of this and um, stay tuned. I wanted to uh, provide some investigative updates at this point right now. Um, my name is Lieutenant Craig Cummings, C-R-A-I-G-C-U-M-M-I-N-G-S, spokesperson for the Texas Department of Public Safety and here speaking on behalf of the uh, Polk County Sheriff uh, at his request. Um, I'm, today I'm joined by Polk County Sheriff Byron Lyons, uh, Polk County District Attorney Shelly Sitton, San Jacinto County Sheriff Greg Capers, and then Polk County Precinct 2 Constable Cunningham, Bill Cunningham. Um, the location that we're at right now is a location of interest. Um, in a little while, you're going to see investigators leaving this scene. Um, we will be back tomorrow. Um, we will have deputies here to protect this location and the investigative efforts that have been uncovered up to this point. We are asking the public to stay away from this area. Um, and then tomorrow we're going to have additional resources that will be on hand to help find Audrey. Um, and I want to reiterate that we are committed to bringing Audrey home. That's the reason why you see the collaborative effort here right now, all of these law enforcement agencies to include the FBI uh, that have been assisting with this. Um, and we're asking the public to report any tips that they think will help us bring Audrey home to the Polk County Sheriff's Office or through our iWatch Texas app. And that can be done anonymously um, from your phone. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. Yes, Annie, you mentioned that you are going to protect some items on the scene. What do you mean by that? Uh, we're, protect we're protecting the investigative efforts. So this is a ongoing investigation. Um, and so the investigators are doing an exceptionally good job at, uh, at gathering information. And so um, that's what we're going to be protecting as they continue their work. Are those the tools you all are using? I'm just trying to clarify yeah yeah we don't want to go any farther than the investigative tools that we're using right now and then investigative leads that they've uncovered um you know this is a very fluid and active investigation with the sole focus of bringing audrey home are you able to confirm who audrey was last seen with uh, we're not releasing that information now. Um, investigators are working um, on multiple ways that they are uh, uh, looking at, at at that type of information. But is right now, we're, we're, not, we're not releasing it. Is there any um, evidence that you found that's key, that's key that says that you were in the right spot? Uh, this is a location of interest. Um, and so we are, that's the reason why we've got the efforts. That's why we have the dogs here. That's the reason why the, uh, the boats have been here. Um, all of this in an effort to, to find Audrey. And, and our prayers are certainly uh, tonight and then tomorrow morning. And we ask for the public as well that uh, Audrey is uh, uh, brought home safe. Is this the only location? Or is it just this body? Yes, we still, we have persons of interest in this case, and we have been at other locations. Um, this is a location of interest where we're putting our investigative efforts right now. Lieutenant Cummings, the FBI told me that the child abduction rapid deployment team was requested in this case. Can you explain what prompted that request? Um, that would be a question for the FBI. They said uh, that that request came from local law enforcement. Okay, and this, that is a, typical thing that will happen um, all the available resources that we can bring out here to help this uh, the FBI has a tremendous asset that they can that they bring to the table um, and we're very appreciative of all of their efforts so this is just one more tool that investigators are using to find Audrey so is it the belief that she was abducted um, I know that 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 term um, implies that um, we're not drawing any conclusions right now. Um, we still have a lot of information that we are going through. Um, and so there's a lot of uh, leads the investigators are following now. And how many persons of interest? Um, we're not releasing that information. You see the 
DA's office here also. Is there a reason for that? Are there, would there potentially be charges coming tonight? Uh, well, we don't know, um, but I can say that the DA is here, the sheriffs are here, because this is a collaborative effort. Uh, the DA brings a very particular set of skills that's essential for us as investigators to get the job done. So we're appreciative of her being here, um, working with us, so that we can um, make sure that all of the I's are dotted and T's are crossed um, in this investigation. Is there a reasonable search that's being continued throughout the night? Um, it's just due to the, the dark. So it's dark. We're not going to put boats in the water. Um, but this also gives us an opportunity to regroup and then look at the information that we've got throughout the night and then come back out tomorrow. But if she's out here, she's dealing with those conditions as well. The darkness, the cold water. Right, right, yeah. Um, we, we're just not going any farther than that right now. Um, and so we are asking the public to stay away from the area, um, but um, uh, that's as far as we can go there. Can you confirm we've seen drones in the air. Are those law enforcement drones and other divers here on site as well? Uh, yeah, there are law enforcement drones that have been here. Um, we are bringing in divers um, as well. Again, this is all an effort to uh, uncover additional leads that will help bring Audrey home. We know law enforcement is asking some folks who've been a lot of some stretches of folks to check their cameras. We haven't had anyone talk about that. Can you kind of talk to us about what areas are asking? Yeah, no, that, that's great. We don't want to give away any, any areas, but if people would review their cameras, if they find something suspicious that uh, they think would warrant the help of investigators or a review by, by our investigators, by all means, please call the Polk County Sheriff's Office. Um, and if it's an emergency, call 911 so that we can evaluate that information. That's a great question. Is there a reason for kind of a lack of information here? I think a lot of our viewers, people who are watching are wondering why we don't know why we're in those locations why we really just don't have a lot of details. If you're asking for the public's help, mm. it seems like more information would be helpful. Yeah, well, unfortunately right now there just isn't more information that we can give. Like I explained in the press conference earlier, um, we have the, we're, we're trying to protect the invest, the integrity of this investigation and that's the reason why and I can understand the public's concern um, that we're not giving out a lot of information. Um, but the end here is to find Audrey uh, and bring her home, and so that's what we're focused on right now. The um, um, and so there is additional information out there. We're just not releasing it. That's what the investigators are using to follow up on. Have you guys found her back? Um, that's additional information that we're not releasing right now. Um, so, but again, we continue with investigative leads and following these things. Um, I know that there are a lot of questions that remain unanswered. Um, we are absolutely searching, searching to get this information so that we can get it to you and get it to the public. But our first priority has to be this investigation right now. That's the reason why we're here. Um, and that's the reason why we'll be back here early tomorrow morning, uh, in hopes that we find Audrey soon. Is the family search tomorrow? We haven't decided on the time. It's probably going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of daybreak. Um, so. Is her family still being cooperative, like you said a few hours ago? Yes. Yeah, families being cooperative, and we certainly appreciate them, and, and we appreciate the uh, community as well. Um, everyone has been exceptionally helpful um, in, in the efforts out here, so uh, we appreciate that. Um, with that, we're going to close it down. You'll see uh, some uh, investigators leaving here shortly, um, but they'll be back tomorrow morning. So with that, I appreciate everybody. Thank you. God bless you, and thank you for your service.